What's up YouTube? This is Kerry from Side Tripping with Kerry. Today I'm in Carmichael, California, which is right outside of Sacramento. And we are going to the former uh, building that used to be a bank. It was a Crocker Bank back in 19, April of 1974, where a bank robbery was committed by members of the SLA, the Symbionese Liberation Army which was a far left radical uh, terrorist group in the 70s. They were in operation from, for a very short time, from about 73 to 75. But in that time, they caused a lot of mayhem. Uh, they were responsible for at least two murders and most famously the kidnapping of uh, Patty Hearst. Uh, they were also uh, they attempted to do a bunch of bombings as well and we're here today to uh, I'm going to show you the the former bank building the Crocker Bank building but we're going to visit the final resting place of one of the SLA's murder victims a woman by the name of Myrna Opsal so in April I believe it was April 28th 1974 Myrna Opsal a mother of four, church-going woman, and the uh, husband of a local um, surgeon was going to this, what was formerly a bank. It was called the Crocker Bank, or it was a Crocker Bank location. And um, she was there to deposit the church donations from that previous Saturday or Sunday. She may have been, I think she might have been a Seventh-day Adventist, so... Um, it was a Saturday service. So anyway, she was there minding her own business and the place gets invaded essentially by at least uh, four members of the SLA. They broke in very, you know, loudly, you know, guns everywhere, uh, cursing. Uh, very quickly though, they all had on like disguises and things like that. And it, they were kind of in and out fairly quickly. But during the robbery, uh, a shotgun held by Emily Harris, who was an original member of the SLA, discharged and hit poor Miss Opsall and killed her. I mean, they rushed her to the hospital where her husband worked, uh, but she unfortunately passed away again just minding her own business, not bothering a soul. And again, now this uh, building, it's used as a church, but as you can see, there's like the, the old deposit looking window thing, you know, where you would make after hours deposits is right there. And it looks like that may have been a drive-through entrance. Now, from what I understand, this, uh, this kind of part out front it's kind of shaped like a arc if you will uh, was put on afterwards to make it look kind of like Noah's Ark so to speak so and the, and the name of the church now is the Ark Mission Church anyway we're gonna head out to uh, Fair Oaks now and visit the final resting place of Miss Opsall all right we are at Fair Oaks Cemetery here in Fair Oaks, California, very near to Carmichael, California, and again in the um, Sacramento area, visiting the final resting place of uh, Myrna Opsal. Uh, just a little bit about the SLA, that terrorist group I was telling you about. So they were in operation for a very short amount of time. Uh, the original members, one of the original members was a guy by the name of Donald DeFreeze, who was a, um, he had been a prisoner and he was escaped, not really an escape, he kind of walked away from a work camp in California. While Donald DeFreeze was in prison, he was part of a kind of a prison rights group, like these uh, prison rights advocates would come and visit him. And among them were Emily and William Harris, who were a married couple, and there were several others. Uh, about 
nine original members uh, that wound up becoming the SLA, the Symbionese Liberation Army. Uh, they took their name from symbiotic or symbiosis, which is basically different organisms living with each other in a symbiotic relationship. And their emblem was a seven-headed hydra. And uh, the seven heads represented the same principles of Kwanzaa, believe it or not. Um, so they were an offshoot, or I guess I should say they were a part of kind of the 60s, late 60s anti-war scene in Berkeley in Northern California. There were a lot of groups around that time, you know, that were super pissed off at the U.S. government. But quite frankly, once the Vietnam War ended, things kind of wound down, you know, like most of the anti-war demonstrators kind of, you know, found other things to do. I guess that maybe they grew up a little bit and got jobs and started raising families and moved on with their lives. But there were a few groups still left that were super radical, uh, like the SLA and like the Weather Underground. The Weather Underground did a bunch of bombings in the 70s. And um, what's kind of interesting to me is I grew up in that era. I was about 10 or 11 years old during the SLA's kind of reign of terror, if you will. And it was on the news. I mean, they were talking about it all the time. And man, it was super huge news when they kidnapped Patty Hearst. I mean, that's all that they talked about. Now you go back, try to find uh, literature about the SLA. You'd be surprised. There's not a whole lot. Um, you know, I was telling my son, you know, we were talking about terrorism one time and I said, you know, you would think that the only terrorists in this world are Arab terrorists, you know, from the Middle East. I mean, that's all you would think there is. But no, there were straight up homegrown terrorists here in America. The 70s was a really violent period of time to be alive. And uh, unfortunately for Miss Opsal, she got caught up in that violence through literally no fault of her own. Um, as I stated when we were outside the former Crocker Bank, uh, she was there minding her own business. And some reports actually say that the shotgun that Emily Harris had, the other members of the SLA told her not to bring it because it, I guess it had apparently uh, discharged when it wasn't supposed to previously. And it wasn't safe, but she brought it along anyway and look what happened. So, Emily and Bill Harris were eventually uh, apprehended years and years later. I want to say dang near 20 years later. There was also the kind of the last fugitive uh, that was found in the early 2000s was a woman by the name of Kathleen Celaya. Uh, but she had changed her name to Sarah Jean Olson and had married a doctor, had three daughters, lived in St. Paul, Minnesota, and was just this, you know, kind of respectable housewife and, uh, you know, active in progressive causes, but, you know, minding her own business. But she got found out after an episode of America's Most Wanted, and they extradited her back to California, and, um, you know, she was going to stand trial. Uh, Olson wound up being very unrepentant. She tried to actually, she pled guilty and then she tried to get out of her plea. And I will tell you from my experience as a criminal defense attorney, judges hate that. <laughs> and the judge wouldn't let her out of her plea. And so she wound up getting, I wanna say the maximum amount available under the plea agreement, which was six years in prison for her part in the murder of Miss Opsall. She also wound up getting, I wanna say 14 years for uh, an attempted murder or bombing of a LAPD car in LA. Uh, as far as Emily Harris goes, she pled guilty as well. Interestingly enough, there were four members in the bank. Emily Harris, uh, Kathleen Celaya slash Sarah Jane Olson, and two others. There were two lookouts. One was, um, one was Bill Harris, 
and the other one I believe was Kathleen Celaya slash Sarah Olson's brother and there were two like getaway drivers if you will or two people in the car one was Patty Hurst one was a woman by the name of Wendy uh, Yashimura and had Emily Harris gone to trial that you know the I will tell you the prosecution had some problems because at least two of the witnesses that they had that testified at the grand jury way back in the 70s had passed away by you know the early 2000s but Patty Hurst you know when she got uh, when, when, when she got arrested she sang like a bird and she was on tap to testify against Emily Harris even in the 2000s so was Wendy Yoshimura so Emily Harris took a deal a plea deal and I think she got the maximum under the plea which was six years now understandably uh, Myrna Opsal had four children one of her children um, one of her sons was super pissed off at you know almost every stage in the process you know um, there were uh, there were problems like I said with with the prosecution so you know they had to deal with the case as they had it I mean you know as a prosecutor if you go into a case half cocked there's a chance the person can get off with nothing so you know, it's it's uh, it, it becomes a balancing game. Even you know, when you start talking to the family about these things, it's like, look, do you want this person to get some prison time, or do you want to run the risk of them getting zero time? So, ultimately, um, Emily Harris took a deal, and she was paroled after about, I want to say, four years. Of, of that sentence so she's out she's on on parole she a matter of fact she might be off parole by this point going back a few years just kind of a personal connection in after the group was formed in 73 one of the first things they did one of the first acts they did was they murdered the Oakland Public School superintendent by the name of Marcus Foster and as with everything that the SLA did, especially with the two murders that they committed, it was, you know, it, it was just nonsensical. Um, the Oakland School District at the time, the high school district, had a policy or they wanted to implement a policy where they would ID all the kids in school. The reason is a bunch of people were coming on and off campus causing trouble. So the solution by the board, school board was, hey, we're going to do this ID thing. So the SLA was reading about it. The left was up in arms about this, you know, uh, IDing of their of children. They thought it was fascist, and they were super pissed off about it. Uh, but the SLA took action. They assassinated Marcus Foster, shot and killed him, and injured his uh, vice superintendent or his assistant superintendent. Uh, and by all accounts. Marcus Foster was a very nice man and you know cared about children and wanted to do what was best for them but they murdered him okay so that's murder number one um, in the summer I'm sorry the late spring of the following year 1974 I was 10 years old and six of the nine members of the SLA were holed up in a house in Watts, California, which is in LA or near LA. And uh, the reason why there's a personal connection is because I had an aunt that lived in Watts. And in May of 74, there was this huge shootout with the LAPD and the FBI who found the SLA safe house. And they pumped so many shells into that place and they shot a bunch of tear gas canisters, caught, caught the house to catch on fire, burned down part of the house next door. And the reason I know about that is because at that summer, uh, my dad and my, my family, we went to LA that summer and we went over to my aunt's house and it was like a couple of blocks away. So my dad took me over there and we got to see it, you know. I mean, there was nothing left. I mean, it was all burnt to the ground. And 
Uh, there were bullet holes everywhere. And it is a miracle that nobody died except all six members of the SLA. They were all shot and killed and or burned up in that house in Watts. So the three members that got away were the Harris's, the Harris's, uh, Bill and Emily, and Patty Hearst. And so they eventually, the following year, for, through 1974 and then 75, they uh, recruited a few more members. I think they never had more than about nine members total. So they recruited like six more people. And then they pulled this Crocker bank heist where Miss Opsal was killed. And um, again, just a, a real tragedy. This woman didn't deserve this. She did not deserve what she got. And, um, you know, they were all wound up, like I said, the people that Emily Harris, uh, Kathleen Celaya, they all took deals. Uh, Bill Harris, uh, Celaya's brother, Stephen Celaya, I believe was his name. They all took second degree murder deals. And uh, like I said before, they're all pretty much out of prison. Matter of fact, there's only one person from the SLA that's in prison. It was a guy who was involved in the murder of uh, Mr. Foster, the Oakland uh, school superintendent, he got life. There were actually two people charged with first degree murder in that case. And um, the other fellow, his last name was Little, he wound up getting a retrial. Something happened in his trial. He got a retrial and went to trial and got acquitted. So he didn't do any time. But his uh, uh, co-defendant, wound up with life and he's still in prison so in any event here is the final resting place of miss opsall the epitaph reads wonderful wife and mother myrna lee epsall December 13, 1932 to April 21st, 1975. And uh, I think I might, have, I might have said the wrong date for the actual armed robbery and um, of the Crocker Bank. Uh, I think I said April 28th, but I, I, it must, be, must have been April 21st because uh, that's the, the date here on the headstone. I was told by the folks at the office that Dr. Opsall Myrna's husband, who was a surgeon at the hospital that they took Miss Opsall to on the date of this uh, murder, uh, passed away very recently. Uh, he doesn't have a headstone yet. You know, rest in peace to Miss Opsall and Dr. Opsall. And my condolences to the family, uh, to the sons and daughters, the four children. Uh, it, it really was a tragedy. Uh, no matter what the aims, good or otherwise, of the SLA might have been or their intentions, uh, this was a tragedy. This this woman did did not deserve this. And uh, again, condolences to the family. So that's going to do it, folks. If you like the video, uh, please give it a like. Uh, please leave some comments if. Uh, you know, the whole Pat Patty Hearst saga, whether or not she willingly joined the SLA, uh, you know, she was doing, uh, sending out these tapes and communiques for a while. Uh, some people said she had this Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, if you know anything about the trial, F. Lee Bailey represented her at the trial. Um, I'm going to tell you just from my personal and professional opinion, I thought he did a kind of a crappy job I didn't I didn't like his uh, strategy during that trial but maybe that's a subject for another video but leave comments uh, let me know what you think and um, if you like the channel please consider subscribing and we'll see you on the next one